what is up fellas welcome and welcome again to my channel whether you are a new or old friend this channel will post one lead code a day based on either a theme or a random choice basically i'm going to be studying with you guys together on a lead code problem i have never attempted before that's right there is no prescripted answer we are on the same page here but don't worry i got your back and we'll crack each of the problems together like brothers and sisters I come from a non-computer science background, so I am no better off than most, if not all of you guys, in terms of coding knowledge. But that is okay. We'll grow our knowledge together as we move on to crack more and more of lead codes. You can think of this as a first-person gameplay of me trying to walk through the lead code set. And who doesn't like first-person gameplays, right? So without further ado, let's start today's code problem. This is the second episode on the series one uh, everything about dynamic programming and today's problem in lead code is problem 1137 nth Tribonacci number so let's take a look all right so we are here uh let's read the problem together nth Tribonacci number the Tribonacci sequence tn is defined as follows okay uh, the first one is zero second one is one uh, third one is one again uh, this is actually identical to the Fibonacci okay let's see what's uh, the new stuff um, tn plus 3 equals to tn plus tn plus 1 and plus tn plus 2 for n greater or equal to zero. Okay, I see. Um, so the problem, the difference between the Fibonacci and the Tribonacci is that instead of adding two previous numbers, now we're adding three. Well, that tree prefix is pretty much self-explanatory for that. Uh, all right, so the code problem itself is that we're given a number, an integer number n, and we want to return the value of tn. Okay, so um, and there's some there are some examples. For example, if n equals to four, you're gonna output, you know, t4, which is four. Uh, okay, here actually I think you know what we can reuse a lot of the code um from from yesterday's uh, Fibonacci problem. Um, but that is a little bit less challenging, right? But we want to kind of like challenge ourselves a little bit more than just copying and pasting from yesterday's code. Uh, so let's see if we can, um, you know, after we implement yesterday's code and made it work again, see if we can improve a little bit in terms of, uh, I guess, either um, speed or, you know, uh, 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 let's say the, the complexity in, in space or in time. Uh, I don't know how we're gonna do that yet, but um, I guess we'll we'll figure that out uh, either with some help from the uh, the answers or the solutions, or you know you know just based on ourselves, and you know maybe we, we come up with some with some brilliant good ideas uh, um, uh, as we do it. So uh, let's see actually if, if we can um, if we, if we can you know just re-implement yesterday's code. Uh, well, we'll just you know we'll just actually copy. From yesterday's code and save ourselves some time. So if you want to know how we implemented um, the Fibonacci number, uh, you can refer to our previous video and take a look at that. And we're just going to take um, that solution from yesterday and implement a new one for this Fibonacci number. All right, so that's what we're going to do here. Um, so we have saved our code uh, in a folder, and that folder is um, is here, and we're using the GitLab uh, IDE to uh, to look at the code we have here. So lead 509, that is the Fibonacci numbers problem. And uh, and you see we have uh, a few implementations. This first implementation is basically just a, a recursive function that does it, but it's kind of slow. So uh, that is what, that's not what we submitted um, for the final submission. But this one here, uh, using dynamic programming is what we have uh, used. Uh, so, 
and actually we had two versions of that even um, and this fib v2 is the one that is you know in spirit has the dynamic programming uh, principle in it so we're going to use this code um, and just you know change it to you know change it to the uh, to the Tribonacci number now let's just uh, copy and paste copy and paste these definitions you know what actually let's just um, let's just create a new f new notebook and um, we're gonna call it we're gonna just properly rename it um, rename it to what we want uh, there we go rename elite what was it um, one one three seven right uh -huh, with an underscore there it is and uh, let's just copy the problem description from lead uh, the Tribonacci number blah 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 right let's just try to copy that in there uh, give it some idea uh, right and then this is the problem and then also there are some code examples here uh, and we just want to maybe copy one of the examples uh, and let's see let's put it let's put it here too right right and there is that um, yeah we're we can still you know um, try this simple one just as a benchmark a very slow benchmark um, so for example this is uh, the recursive solution is not it's not the DP solution uh, it's just a recursive solution iteration uh, now we just change Fibonacci to Tribonacci series and input output types are the same but uh, number zero it's gonna be zero number one is one number two is one number three what is number three it's gonna be the sum of the first three so it's two um, yeah it's the same let's just make one more example let's do F eight or four uh, now it's gonna be the sum of the previous three numbers one plus one plus two and that's gonna be four all right so and when we return we just you know add one more naturally to make to evolute this from um, Fibonacci to Tribonacci and we want to make sure that you know the cases are uh, self um, uh, you know uh, in terms of logic you know uh, sound um, that it contains all the possible cases so we're gonna add a case of n equal to 2 because uh, when we actually want the third number um, we don't really use this um, this iterate uh, um, recursive expression yet it's just a default number given uh, by default here so I think that covers all of our cases and uh, let's just do some test cases now if input is 0 it's definitely 0 if input is 1 it's definitely 1 input 2 we should get um, 1 input 3 we should get um, we should get 2 but input 4 now here's the difference we should get 4 instead uh, right if input is 5 we should get um, let's see if it's five you know it'll be one plus two plus four and how much is that uh, one plus two is three three plus four it's seven so we should be expecting seven here um, number six it'll be you know two plus four plus seven and that would be how much 13 yeah if I'm not wrong all right so we are gonna just you know run the code and see if it works test cases maybe um, for uh, let's add a little bit more documentation for clarity for either the baseline uh, recursive uh, baseline recursive approach and let's just see right yep everything is as expected so we have a first baseline you know to be there uh, and then we of course we're gonna try to revisit what we did yesterday uh, use class member function to test the same function code above but now um, we're gonna have a different version 
Right. So let's see. Solution project. Uh, Fibonacci. Now this is Tribonacci. Tribonacci one one two one zero one one two four seven thirteen. And uh, you know Tribonacci. Well, it's important to update the documentation. You don't want to mess with documentation at all. And uh, we're just gonna copy these examples from above. Make sure the indentation is correct. Uh, right, and here we have a previous implementation. We're just gonna copy that that recursive implementation here as well. Make sure the indentations are correct. So this fib is nothing different than this f iter. It's just that it's now tugged into this um, this uh, class as a member function. So we can just call the class member function instead of calling like a standalone function. That makes it more neat and tidy. Uh, but then the second approach is the one that is more you know better, more efficient. Uh, better than average, I guess, and it uses like DP uh, as kind of like a backbone or you know in spirit. So what we're doing, I, I just give ourselves a quick recap of what we're doing in this approach. So for this approach, what we're doing is that we are um, we're working kind of like from the from the ground up, from the bottom up, um, because we know that you know for the Fibonacci or Tribonacci series, uh, any number. Um, to determine any number, it depends on you know all previous values, all previous numbers. So um, since we're gonna calculate those anyways, why don't we just calculate from the bottom up? Uh, start from zero into one, to two, to three, and all the way to the n that we um, that we specify. So um, that means that once we calculate, I mean, I mean the 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 beauty of this approach is that once you um, calculated one new you know larger number. Uh, you, you store the value and then you don't calculate it again. Uh, and in the future, if you, if you ever want to use that value for your future calculation again, you just refer to it. You just look it up, right? So that's why we need a data structure to store all the previously calculated values. And the data structure, I mean, you can use all kinds of different data structures. You can use lists, maps, uh, maybe, I don't know, uh, what else, dictionaries. Um, but we choose to use lists. We chose to use list uh, last time. So we're going to stick to that first and have a working prototype. And then maybe we can see if we can improve it by you know, using a different data, data structure. So um, uh, we stick with the list option here. Uh, now, let's go back to the implementation and update it to the Fibonacci series. Uh, so this line stays the same. Check if the values are in the list. Uh, we're just going to return list. Yeah. If not, expand the list until you have your answer. Right. So we have like a direct lookup portion of it, and we have an expansion, uh, append, append, uh, you know, appending uh, uh, option as well. If if the number exceeds um, uh, the the stored calculation results in the in the class object. So this so this function. It's pretty general. I mean, it's it's scalable. So it turned out that we we don't really need to change anything in this function. So it works for any Fibonacci, Fibonacci, or anything, because the um, the recursive logic is encoded in the, in the extension list function, uh, which is called uh, by this fib v2 function here. So um, let's go directly into that and see what do we do. Uh, so extension list given n extend this list to have and plus one elements that makes sense right uh, now basically it yeah it it's gonna incorporate uh, or um, encode that um, yeah that uh, that that Fibonacci or Tribonacci uh, uh, recursive function here this is the Fibonacci one we can extend it to Tribonacci don't no worries so first we look at how many elements the self stored list already has and start from there uh, so we look up the length of it. If the length is less than two, that means we didn't have, you know, all the necessary initial values yet. So we're gonna reinitiate that. In this case, we need to update it, you know, at one to every of these um, scalar uh, scalars here. Um, yeah, 
initialize store list as 0, 1, but I think this time it'll be 0, 1, 1. If stored list has less than three elements, right? Um, yep, and then we're going to update this now, 0, 1, 1. Uh, yeah, so we update it, and then what do we do? We, uh, we're calling ourselves again. Okay, so why we're we calling ourselves? Because um, we still need to perform the task, right? The, um, the updating of the list is the first thing. But then we still have to go back to the problem of like you know extending it to to end. So we're gonna call ourselves again. So this is again a recursive operation. Um, and then the other uh, possibility when uh, now n is greater than greater or equal to two, do we update this with three? Uh, I think yes. Okay. And when we update this. With three, what happens is like if the specified um, integer n is greater or equal to three, that means we're looking at the you know the fourth element or you know, fifth or, or larger elements. Again, remember the the indices start the indices start um, uh, at zero, right? So if it's n equal greater or equal to three, that means we start from the fourth element or the fifth. Um, or onward. Uh, so when n is greater or equal to three, we are gonna use a for loop to basically fill in um, the intermediate uh, values we need in order to get to n, right? And it's the for loop for i in range L0. Uh, yeah, because because we're supposing that if we're in, in this uh, else if condition, um, we supposedly um, have, uh, you know, the first three elements. Uh, so we're gonna start from the the uh, the last element in the stored list. Uh, yeah, and uh, we're gonna append from there. Uh, right. So it goes from there, and it's gonna add append something to the list. And now we're gonna update this with the what was it? Tribonacci logic stored list. Now we're going to add i minus 3. Right, so that does it. I think we just did the job of extending it into Tribonacci. So how about we, um, yeah, trib. Let's, let's, just, let's just call it trib, all right? Let's call it trib. Uh, yeah, just call it trib. Yeah, let's call it trib and uh, trib v2. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. What was it? F enter? No, this is wrong. Uh, trib, 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 trib. All right. Um, trib. Yeah. Uh, trip v2. Yeah, it's important to update, you know, the the doc the documentation. That's very important here. I think we just did that. Now we have done our uh, function name updates, and let's just uh, you know run this run this class definition, and then move on to our test cases. So for our test case for trip. Uh, yeah, this is like still the baseline approach, but you know, tucked in a, in a class definition. So we're gonna use the same test cases, uh, but this time it'll be s dot trib instead of um, f eater. Let's see if it works, and we just run it. Oh, whoops! There is something wrong. Okay, let's see what is the problem. Name trib is not defined. Well, oh, okay, so it's got to be self. I forgot that, you know, prefix. So for any member, class member functions, uh, you're still going to have to add the prefix of self dot uh, for it. And I think, yeah, that applies to every or everywhere everywhere else yeah so now let's just update the class definition update that yep um, all the tests passed uh, now let's just move on to I guess the next one 
we're gonna use trib v2 right so uh, what we do is we're gonna just um, change the name of the function a little bit uh, we're gonna use the same test cases we're gonna add v2 to all of them here and see if they produce the same correct answers and they do and that's it I mean that's uh, that's a success I mean so we just basically um, copied what we had from yesterday and we managed to do uh, Tribonacci instead of Fibonacci let's send the solution to our um, lead code and see how efficient or inefficient it is for our problem now let's just paste it there okay you want the name to be Tribonacci got it Tribonacci uh, and uh, we can delete that one I believe oh we also need our um, this is important we also need our definition for for this um, stored list in the class definition so we're gonna add it here right below Tribonacci make sure the indentation is correct and the extension list right but we still need to update because we changed these remember if we change the name of this function we need to uh, make sure everything is consistent uh, this is consistent this this name is consistent I think everything is fine so let's just run code and see if it works run passed now let's just uh, run more test cases and it's passed 28 milliseconds let's submit okay um, yeah it's a uh, it's an average or above average solution accepted 27 milliseconds it's good okay but it's I mean we can improve so um, let's let's just go back to our code and and think about what we can do to improve this um, looking at this runtime it says it's faster than 41 percent uh, and uh, memory usage is pretty good I think 85 beating 84 85 percent is, is good enough as a beginner but I just wanted to be faster than others how can we do it faster well um, just looking at our code again uh, I see that for data we're using lists uh, to store our data uh, I don't know if any other data structure will be faster let's just look it up okay uh, is list uh, maybe let's try dictionary faster than list in Python okay people have been asking this question ooh wow okay this is actually pretty good information out there a dictionary is 6.6 .6 times faster than a list when we look up in a hundred times okay that's that's good to know I mean that, it's a um, that's good information do we need to know deeper knowledge um, well this is like a good explanation because uh, a dictionary is a lookup while a list is an iteration dictionary uses a hash lookup while your list requires walking through the list until it finds the, res the result from the beginning result each time I mean that's that's a, that's a pretty good takeaway here I mean this is a very good piece of knowledge that I think me you all of us as you know beginner level coders um, uh, want to remember uh, so guys according to these answers on on, uh, on Google um, search dictionary is faster than list uh, you know just across the board so I think that's worth investing uh, so that's definitely what we're gonna do here uh, we're gonna change we're gonna refactor our code and change our um, our list um, you know storage into a dictionary storage and how do we do that well I don't know but we'll look it up okay uh, don't worry we got you covered uh, so let's uh, let's just uh, say we're gonna do first uh, a third version of this uh, and then we're gonna use extend list instead of using extend list we're going to say extend dictionary right right so uh, that's that's what we're going to do yeah we're going to just use the template but this time um, 
we're going to say v3, uh, v3, uh, you can dp for tributary series with, um, yeah, with dictionary, dictionary storage. But this is like with list storage, right? Yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, check if the value is already in the dictionary. All right, and uh, expand the dictionary. I'm just gonna yeah change the wording. Dictionary while you have your answer. Until you have your answer, extending the dictionary. Right, looking up. Um, a hash table or a hash map is faster than uh, uh, than uh, iterating through the list. That's a fair enough answer. So m maybe I should uh, maybe I should add that here. You know, benefit. Yeah, I'm just gonna say benef benefit of um, using dictionary over list. Uh, yeah is that it is 6.6 .6 times faster because uh, because uh, uh, because dictionary uses uses um, hash lookup while list uses uh, iteration for lookup yeah, I think that's a, that's a fair enough statement. So we're gonna just add that benefit here uh, as you know an extra documentation of why we're doing this. Now uh, we did that. Uh, we did that. Hey, what is this? Uh, come back to this function again after execution. I think that's a, a legacy code. It was no longer used, so I'm just gonna kill it. Yeah, uh, and. Uh, and uh, we're gonna basically need we basically need to define instead of extending list, uh, we need to define a function that extends a dictionary. So let's just change the name of it. I'll worry about you know consistency later. Just be scrappy first and be bold. Be you know be brave and just change it. Uh, extend dictionary. Extend dictionary. Uh, extend dictionary given n extend um, self stored dictionary uh, to have envelopes one elements yeah 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 okay look at how many elements is in the um, uh, stored dictionary already has and start from there yeah okay so uh, we need to build our dictionary or initialize our dictionary right so let's go back here stored we're gonna yeah we're, what we're doing here we're gonna add um, a dictionary item as um, as a class property or attribute and uh, I happen to knew from you know previous uh, self-learning that dictionary uses this curly bracket instead of uh, the square bracket um, so let me just say a dictionary to store calculated true when I see numbers. Uh, well, it's yeah, uh, it's not gonna be like this anymore. It's gonna be like a list. And uh, let's hey, let's look up. Okay, let's look up how Python uses uh, dictionaries. So Python dictionary. Uh, 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 Python dictionary. Yeah, let's see. Python dictionaries. Right. So okay, you, you use curly brackets. And then you use colon to, uh, well, you use comma to separate, you know, each element, each pair of uh, key uh, content um, in the dictionary. Uh, and then you use um, colon to separate a key from its, you know, pointed content. Anyways, that's how you define dictionary. So we wanted to know how to initialize a dictionary, like an empty dictionary. So Python initialize empty dictionary. How to do that? Uh, let's just look at it. Whoa, yeah. Uh, yep, exactly. That's how you do it. So I did it. We did it right. 
we did it correctly. We did it right. Uh, and let's see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, next, we are going to see how do we, uh, instead of extend, uh, going back, right, how do we append, uh, add an item to the dictionary? Uh, yeah, just so Python add uh, 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 element to dictionary. Yeah, there we go. Smart Google. You know what we're looking for. Adding item into a dictionary. So example, that's like, yeah, initializing a dictionary with some three mm, key, uh, key content pairs. Uh, and the stick color equals to red. Okay, so that's how you add it. Um, you just specify the dictionary name and then you use a square bracket to host the new key and then an equal sign and then after the equal sign you give it like the, the content that the new key is pointed to. Alright, so I got it. We are good to go now. So this is correct, it initializes an empty dictionary and down here with our extend dictionary function here the only thing well the only thing we need to change is to you know change the behavior of append for dictionary but let's first you know walk through line by line and make sure that our documentation is up to date um length is this working like yeah we need to see how to look up the length of a dictionary as well so python length of dictionary how do you look that up uh dictionary length method let's see how do you do that Len dict really okay so you can actually use the same function len for dictionaries all right so len dict got it let's go back and see um so we only need to update the um stored list into stored dictionary and this will give us the length of the dictionary and this doesn't change um, yeah, we're going to change, update the, uh, the, the, the documentation, um, yeah, the comments, uh, as, right, now, how do we initialize it? We initialize it as, um, a key, what is key? Uh, dictionary, can we use, like, can we use, yeah, um, zero? And uh, yeah, we're using integers as keys. The first one is zero, I believe. Uh, and then the second one is one, and then its answer is one, right? And then the third one is two, and then its um, content is one, right? So that is, I believe, the right syntax, syntax for the initialization. All right, there we go go but now we also change the variable name and change the function name extend dictionary right this is a re again a recursive call to itself now we change we update this uh, else if condition we don't need to change this that's all good and I think this is all good we just need to uh, change this behavior so instead of saying append um, uh, method for a uh, for a uh, list. Now, when it comes to dictionary, the way you append it, like we um we just saw it here. Let's look at the syntax again. Uh, not here, not this, but this. Yeah, you just specify the new key and content pair in such an expression. So well, I yeah, will just I'll just be lazy and copy paste. Okay. Uh, we're gonna copy paste this expression and we are going to update it with what what ours um, yeah, with our dictionary name self that store dictionary and instead of using color as a key we are using an integer as the key and because we are looking at I here hmm are we updating it you know, with I, let's think, think, think. Because, yeah, because we're using I minus one, I minus two, and I minus three to update. I think, 
and the new one is indexed as I. And then instead of saying red, we're just going to say, let's say this. But is that how you call, you know, how you call, how you, you know, look up um, your, 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 your dictionary? Do you use, uh, do you use square brackets? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you do, if you know, but I don't know. So I'll just um, look it up. Python, look up value in dictionary. How do you do that? Uh, Python dictionary search or look up by value. So how do you do that? The syntax um, items function. Look at syntax uh, items function. That's going to list all the items. But uh print dictionary search by value well we, we don't really want just look up yeah look up by, by value no we, we just want to look up by key look up key In dictionary um um right how to find a key I mean, that's the basic syntax in the dictionary, right? So, I think people do that, right? So, if word is the key, word count is a dictionary. Yeah, I think that's how you look it up, no problem. I am convinced that that's how you do it. So, you just make sure that it's like this. And then we just basically delete that line. And I think we're good, right? We have the V3 that uses uh, dictionary. And then we have the uh, accessory auxiliary function, extend dictionary to go with it. Uh, right, so, well, here, let's, let's, just, let's just, you know, check again, make sure, you know, the function names, variable names are consistent. Here we, we see that, okay, we need to actually update this. Uh, stored dictionary. The len function is good, it's fine. Update this here as well, stored dictionary. Uh, right, extend dictionary. And this is stored dictionary, okay. I think we've updated um, the variable names, but let's just double check this function again. Extend dictionary. Documentation looks good. Um, you know, comment looks good. Variable name looks good. Uh, variable name looks good. Initialization looks good. Um, function name looks good. The for loop, um, it looks good. You know, the new um, append syntax for dictionary looks good. So I think. I am convinced. Let's just test it. Now we have to basically copy and paste this. Um, make a new section, v3 dp version with dictionary, with dictionary storage. Uh, right, so instead of v2, we just say v3. Everything else stays the same. Let's just first run, uh, you know, run the class definition again to make sure we have the latest class definition. And then let's just run this test case here. Ew, okay, got some error. Let's take a look. What is that? List index is out of range. Uh, are you kidding? Are we still using lists? Uh, where does this say that we're using lists? Return self sort dictionary list index out of range. Really? Hmm. So maybe it is illegal to use, uh, I guess, illegal to use integers as dictionary keys. Is that true? Um, right, Python used in. Integers as yeah okay, smart Google. Create dictionary using dict with integer keys. Stack uh yeah close this. Stack this uh, stack overflow. Python you're trying to create 
predict 1 equals 1, 2 equals 2, 2 equals 3. What if we make the case as integers? When I try this, I got an error. Of course, I could do this, uh, which works fine. My main question, is there a way to set integer keys using the dictionary constructor? Uh, 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 yes, but not with that version of the constructor. You can do this, uh, dict 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, and it will get you that. There's several different ways to make a dict. Uh, providing keyword arguments only works for keys that are valid Python identifiers. Uh, but if your keys are not valid Python identifiers, you're forced to use a more less simple looking. So what are Python identifiers? All right, uh, Python keywords, Python identifiers. Uh, identifiers can be a combination of letters in lowercase or digits or an underscore. Uh, oh, an identifier cannot start with a digit. All right, that's, that's, uh, that's another lesson to take here, guys. I didn't know this. I think because our um, right, our identify our key, we chose the key. Um, we chose to use like directly the integers. Uh, yeah, the integers as the keys. But you know what? This this is actually, I guess, not a good choice. Um, It's not a good identifier. So how, how about, let's do this. Um, we can use strings, right? We can use strings. So let's just uh, make them strings. I think, um, yeah, I think, um, you know, this single, uh, single quote. Yeah, single quote means strings. Uh, Right, and then um, I need to maybe just do it, do a type conversion here. Uh, right, and we're gonna do type type conversion here as well. Yeah, just use type conversion. So then now instead of using integers as um, as uh, dictionary keys, we're using strings. But I'm not sure if this is like legal. Um, I'm not sure. But but the lesson that we learned, it should be added here, right? So lesson learned. Note. Uh, uh, do not just use uh, use integers as uh, dictionary keys. They are illegal because Python identifiers cannot start with a digit. All right, we use the string version of the integers, integers as keys here. Yeah, so I think I think that's well, you know, it's it's that's clear enough. It's, there's some you know clarity there, uh, and uh, let's just see if if this thing works right. String convert, yeah, string conversion, convert, yeah, Python convert uh, int to string. How do you do that? It's a pretty common thing, I guess. Right, in Python, an integer can be converted into a string using the built-in str function. A str function key takes in any Python data type and converts into a string. Uh, but use of that is not only way to do it. All uh, right, all right, okay. I think uh, we need to use this function instead of a instead of string. Right, so that could be easily fixed. Right, 
All right, so it's kind of a, like a default function that we don't need to import from any package, which is good. Like, yeah. Do I do I want to test it? Yeah, I I do want to test it. So let's str ninety nine here. Let's see what we got. Right, we got the string version of ninety nine. Perfect. So that being said, I think now we're good. Yeah, now we're good. We're good. We're good. Now let's just uh, update this uh, class definition and let's go to this v3. Oops, another problem. What is the key error? Key error zero. Right. Still, I guess we're not familiar enough with how dictionaries work. But the problem happens at the same place. Is it the same place? Return self short dictionary and oh yeah no wonder because when you return it when you return it when you return it um you don't do this you actually do string of this right yeah remember now our keys are in the format of uh, Python string. So we need to convert the integer first into string and then use that string as the key. Now, now let's just try that again with the updated um, with updated definition or correction. All right, we are getting somewhere. Uh, we passed the first three, but uh, the fourth one uh, has a problem. Okay, I have a I have an idea where it went wrong because the first three was okay. So the initialization covered the first three cases, but when it goes to number four, when we start to use the what was it like the recursive uh, um, relation of the Fibonacci series, that is where things went wrong. Okay, you're pointing at line eighty-eight, and you're saying, what is it list? indices must be integers or slices not string hey we're, we're not working with lists okay stored dictionary is a dictionary so why would you say it's a list hmm. oh because we have stored list here that is my bad we have not like fully changed our variable names so hopefully with that change we're good and uh, let me just break this into two lines to make it a little bit more uh, I guess readable yeah so with that change okay so that's not how you do it so how can I yeah how do you break a, a one line one long line Python into two lines that's uh let's see uh, how to you know how to break Python code into multiple lines? Uh, you cannot split statement by pressing enter. That's what we did. Instead, use the backslash to indicate that the statement is continued on the next line. Okay, backslash. Let's key, see an example. All right, see backslash. Got it. We need a backslash here right got it uh, and here we go with that definition updated let's see perfect now we have a pass and that means we have successfully implemented the code with the dictionary version of um, of it now let's send this thing back to LeetCode to see if it has an improved performance. I'm guessing that it would be, but uh, who knows? We, we'll just have to try. Uh, we'll just have to try. Yeah. So let's send it there. Now, what we do is we now paste this function definition here, change its name to Tribonacci as expected. Um, 
and then we're going to write initialize instead of the stored list we need to initialize the stored dictionary uh, right this line here so I'm gonna s swap that out put that dictionary in and swap this extend list function with our extend um, dictionary function nicely here and here we go all right just uh, double check we have the Tribonacci function documented as is and we're calling the dic extend dictionary function to you know update the update the dictionary I think that's it let's just uh, run code give it a test accept it 23 milliseconds that's already an improvement from 27 last time so let's run multiple 37 milliseconds is that faster I don't know let's just submit so now the runtime of last submitted code was 27 milliseconds faster than 41 percent uh, memory use 13 megabytes faster than 85 percent so let's submit and see if it's faster Woo! wow how did it become actually slower I didn't expect this I mean according to what we looked up on Google <laughs> um, yeah the dictionaries are supposed to be faster than lists but we got actually slower results um, that is a disappointment um, but but hey um, we learned something new right we learned how to, to do dictionaries and we learned how to um, actually you know yeah just break Python into multiple lines uh, that's good but well let's just try to see if we can learn something new from the solution here um, possible solutions right now let's uh, let's actually just um, you know set our solution aside and look at what um, what people say in the solution. Possible solution space versus performance optimization. There could be two approaches here. The first one is to optimize the performance, and the second one is to minimize the space used. I think in terms of uh, excuse me, in terms of our submission. Um, our memory usage was pretty good, but we need to improve our our speed. So let's just yeah, focus or focus on the speed. Um, so the first one is to optimize the performance. That's what we want. Uh, let's start from the performance optimization. Since n is known to be less than 38, it's enough to pre-compute all 38 Fibonacci numbers once, store them in a static variable of the class solution and then just retrieve a needed number in a constant time well that is kind of like cheating right or I mean this is like yeah it's something like cheating because if you know you know the upper bound of your scope of the problem you can pre-compute so well in a way it's not cheating I mean you can reuse the same class definition for your, uh, I guess, for your for your code, right? I guess so. Pre-compute and then use it. But I mean, since we have our class definition, maybe what lead code in the back end is not like recreating a class object each time for each of the unit tests. Uh, I hope not, but if that's the case, we will not get much gain by, by, by doing what is written here. But let's just read on, okay? Uh, it's enough to pre-compute all 38 numbers once, store them in a static variable on the class solution, and then just, uh, 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 uh and then just retrieve a needed number in a constant time during the tested, test case execution. How to make the preliminary computations? Uh, two ideas could be worked: recursion with memorization and dynamic programming, uh, and operations to compute n Fibonacci numbers. Simple recursions like that is out of consideration because it will result in exponential time. Really? So you're saying that this is bad? 
this recursion is bad. I mean, I'm actually using that recursion, so maybe I can I can improve by you know change this recursion according to whatever is more um, smart, smarter approach with preliminary computations has a perfect O1 runtime performance, but needs in O n space to keep n Fibonacci numbers. Yeah, more memory, understandable, because you're pre-computing numbers. Uh, in some quite rare cases, it's crucial to optimize space. In such, such okay, you're talking about space now. Uh, but I am more concerned about um, performance rather than space storage. So let me just see if we can, yeah, go down to one of the optimized time runtime performance branches instead of the optimized space branches. Precompute, yeah. It was an idea that we didn't try. Uh, we're actually like compute as we go, but you know we still store store our our um we still store our if you take a look we still stored our uh our Tribunacci what was it uh this is so unreadable yeah we stored our dictionary we initialize our dictionary and we update our dictionary as we go right so we're kind of like pre-computing but not you know at once we're computing uh, on demand right uh, right all right recursion memorization dynamic programming space optimization dynamic programming Yeah, uh, DP is something we're talking about space optimization, but do we have it? Um, let's see. Right, you have a for loop, and uh, you have like yeah. Right, you have that. So that's the simple case, I and mean, you do need to build up uh, further more than the simple case. You have a for loop uh, to compute n minus two times, uh, and then you are updating the you know x y z x y z there. Right. So this is like a dynamic programming solution, I bet. Um, right, but then you're not storing them. So my solution is actually better than this because we're storing the solution for reuse. Uh, not the solution, storing the uh, storing the the calculated uh, triple notch numbers for reuse. So let's see your approach to performance optimization. Okay, this is what we want: performance recursion with memorization. Uh, Pre-compute, uh, initiate array of pre-computed Fibonacci numbers by zero, and initiate the first three numbers, uh, and then return helper n minus one, and then you are going to, I guess, increment n from you know um, from like from the big from two to like thirty-eight, uh, maybe. And recursive function helper k. What does helper k do? If k equal to zero, return zero. If k if k is not equal to zero, return nums k. Uh, what does that mean? Otherwise, this 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 return nums k. Okay, this. Okay, this is like saying if if we have like a case element in nums, then you, you just look it up and return it. Otherwise, you're gonna have to uh, use this recursive function to uh, to compute something, and this is like a recursion because it, it's calling helper again calling helper again. 
but this yeah this recursion it's not smart because it's gonna have a lot of um, uh, duplicate calculations uh, we we've covered that in our last video yesterday um, this kind of recursion really is going to compute a lot of uh, uh, make a lot of computations uh, unnecessary uh, okay and then you retrieve right this is that complexity time wise it's fast space wise you're gonna need to store that performance optimization dynamic programming uh, pre-compute 38 numbers perform the loop for an I in range from 3 to 38 yeah this is like building from bottom up approach I like this better than the approach 2 because the approach number 2 is that you know you just you just compute as you go and each time when you compute something you're gonna have to traverse all the values in helper K but oh okay so uh, sorry I uh, I think I uh, I misunderstood this approach so this is actually fast because um, you know this is a condition function it doesn't really calculate all the step um, uh, down to the bottom uh, every time it it uses the lookup here so this is a lookup so if this nums which is like a stored property in the class class definition if it already has the value it's just gonna look it up so this recursion is not going to cause like uh, cause um, repeated computation it's gonna cause some repeated lookup yeah so that's it this is like it involves some repeated lookup but it does not involve repeated recomputation right so this one has repeated lookup and this one the bottom up approach which I like more it doesn't even have repeated lookup because you're iterating from bottom up from the ground up um, so you don't really need to uh, do that repeated lookup you just build gradually from the smaller numbers to the larger numbers and every step is necessary you're not like look up looking up uh, recursively so that saves lookup time compute at each step the new Fibonacci number right build it from the ground up retrieve needed number from the array of pre-computed numbers okay so I guess this is what you're doing you're actually okay you're huh, that's smart you're actually creating a new class that stores what stores a a nums stores like a nums thing here and then you yeah you, there's like a Uh, okay, the constructor function. It actually, actually, when you call that constructor, it's going to build up everything from three to, from three to twenty-eight. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, and then when you call the solution, you first build it up. This is going to cost the majority of the time. And then this Fibonacci number function, Fibonacci func Tribonacci function is just going to look up um, in in the nums in the nums in num uh, yeah in the nums property okay so you're making T a I guess a member class or what was it like yeah is this like yeah so a solution class object um inherently has a tree object as one of its uh, uh properties or attributes uh so right so and it's initialized with this uh, a, a constructor function init in the tree class so what it does is that um it's going to be initialized with all the calculations done for all the 38 numbers and when you do this yeah it's going to be definitely faster for sure because it just you know it fills it up so i think this is going to be the fastest solution that i i can find out there can we improve ours based on the inspiration of this approach number three um well let's see what we're doing compared to what this approach number three is doing this is pretty elegant. I mean, it's 
you know, just uh, about 10 lines. Uh, mine has 37 lines. Well, I do have more documentation than them, uh, which is a good thing to do, you know. I'm not blaming myself for being, you know, lengthy. That's necessarily lengthy for a beginner. Uh, so let's see. So we have... So the smarter idea that this solution number three does uh, have is that um, you are pre-computing all the solutions from the very beginning instead of uh, instead of uh, instead of uh, you know looking it up on the go and. That is, I guess, less function calls to the extended dictionary because I think for our purpose, we are um, we are yeah we are um, doing this on the go and uh, it ended up being not so uh, not so efficient. So right, let's uh. Let's take the spirit from this solution and then see if we can further optimize the performance by refactoring our current version of the solution into a solution that actually pre-computes the dictionary. Right, let's do that. And we're going to do that as a version 4, OK? Uh, how do we do that? We are. Are we, are we going to introduce another class? Um, we can, but um, let's actually not try to do that. Let's just use one class. And uh, we're going to use um, a dictionary as a, the same dictionary as, you know, as the place to store uh, the numbers. But then I'm going to introduce another function to compute all the numbers at once right that's what we're going to do so with that being said we're going to introduce a version 4 right here we go this is getting better guys this is getting better trip ver version 4 so trip version 4 uh, using DP for Fibonacci series with dictionary storage and uh, pre-computing all like 38 uh, 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 all 38 uh, numbers uh, tri tri um, Tribonacci numbers required by the lead code lead code checker So, um, um, we don't need this if condition anymore because we know that we've like already explored all the possible, all the possible um, answers. So we just directly return this. There's no need to, no need to you know check if uh, if the list is expanded enough or not because it is expand it to the fullest at the beginning so we don't need to perform the check so if we don't perform that if check maybe this is going to save ourselves some time in addition to the time that we can save by you know, repeatedly calling the extended list function uh extended dictionary function sorry uh so what we're going to do is that we're going to actually you know compute the um compute the stored dictionary uh, uh, once, once for all, once for all. Right. So we're gonna have to call the self uh, function, like yeah, compute uh, uh, fill, fill dictionary. Right. And we're gonna fill the dictionary with what? With the, yeah, with n, not n, with the, um, I guess, uh, m max. Right. And we know our m max is what? Thirty eight right and we're gonna fill it and then we're just gonna return what we want yeah now we're just gonna build 
that function um, def um, fill dictionary and then self and max right this is the function we're, we're building and uh, for best practice we're gonna give it a uh, documentation given a max not extend but you know build the self uh, not stored list but a uh, store dictionary uh, 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 um, to have a max uh, elements right that's uh that's that's you know that's uh you know well said and uh, yeah that's a good uh, uh, good documentation and then uh how do we do that how do we fill it up well we're gonna use the for loop but this time we're gonna do it just once and for all right uh yes once and for all and uh but first we need to initialize the first three uh, so here we go. We're gonna say, yeah, autofill the first three elements. That's what we do, right? And the uh, next thing what we do is that we're gonna then fill the rest using the recur recursion recursive relation right and now since we've filled 0 1 and 2 we're gonna start with 3 uh, and uh, instead of n plus 1 let's say n max right and uh, so well I think it's gonna be mx plus 1 because the range function is gonna go from 3 to n max if we specify n max plus 1 as a second input parameter here that's just you know a niche for this function uh, and then let's see if we need to change anything here uh, store dictionary and then yeah we are basically appending this dictionary with our new input uh, and we're doing everything like before so there's nothing that needs to change here I believe all right so I think now we have it we have our v4, which pre-computes uh, the dictionary and then um, returns the lookup. You know, uh, I'm just gonna say lookup uh, the nth, uh, uh, you know, the, the nth um, lookup the dictionary using n. Yeah. That's probably good enough. So I'm going to again run this function definition. And then we need to basically build another test case section. Now, v4, dp version with dictionary storage and pre computation uh, of all Tribonacci numbers. Right, so we're going to say v4 for all of these. Uh, see if it works. And yep, it works as intended. The next thing is to put this code back into our lead code problem and see how much faster this is going to get us. I am very hopeful, you know, optimistic. So let's just first delete this extend dictionary function. And then we also um, update our Tribonacci function. You know, update the documentation as well. And we're going to delete the previous Tribonacci function there. Uh, yep. And then next, we're going to put our fill dictionary function in here here it is 
and here we go let's give it a test works wow look at that six milliseconds ain't that better I think I think the performance bump up mainly came from the fact that um, we're not using if conditions I think so because yeah just for one calculation if it's that much faster it, it means that we we must have you know saved ourselves something by re removing some redundant calculation I think it's the if condition uh, run multiple cases 31 minutes second you see um, yeah okay let's just submit see if it's much faster or not uh, well you see now here we have actually a little bit more memory storage than others hmm so we definitely improved our runtime from you know 30 or 27 to 23 but then the memory usage is larger why is that well uh, I guess because yeah we are storing all 38 answers there that's why uh, but do we need to go up to 38 is, is 37 enough like the description uh, 37 yeah so if we change this thing to 37 I think that is going to be a little faster right see if we can um, right uh, well let's see 35 millisecond are you sure about that Wow um why is it so much slower than before I just changed one number oh okay there we go um you know I guess like <laughs> the lead code test cases they are random so sometimes they're gonna give you a more challenging set and sometimes they're gonna give you like a an easier set so this one for example we're we're beating the majority you know beating the average peop, um average code uh, both in speed and in uh, in memory usage so which is good all right so I guess this wraps up today's code challenge and I, I feel pretty good about it because um, not only we can use reuse code from yesterday we also learned a few tricks along the way for example uh, let me just bring you back um, a little bit to what we have learned um, so today we have learned about how um, how to basically first, you know, transfer our previous knowledge of building a tri Fibonacci series code into this Tribonacci series code, and uh, um, the fact that you know the the solution is built in a uh, in a uh, in a class definition, in other words, uh, object oriented programming, a lot of the code can be reused. For example, the the Tribonacci function. Uh, didn't really have to change we we just need to change you know the auxiliary functions a little bit um, and then also uh, we learned that you know if we replace you know according to Google search at least if we replace uh, uh, the storage the storage method um, of list with uh, dictionaries we should get like a six or seven time uh, uh, a speed improvement over over lists although we didn't see that I mean it could be by chance because you know the lead code um, the lead code uh, test sets are, are provided generated automatically maybe with some randomness but you know theoretically uh, dictionaries should be faster than lists so stick with dictionaries whenever you can and avoid using lists for you know lookup kind of tasks uh, which is exactly what we what we ha what we are facing with here uh, and a third thing is that um, I guess uh, you know in terms of uh, in terms of further optimizing the performance we learned that you know uh, if we there's a trick here like if the lead code problem has given you the you know the scope of the problem like how 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 much how high are you going up in the in the numbers here then you can kind of like cheat or I mean this is like exploiting the problem condition I guess it's not not really cheating but it feels like it um, you can just 
actually pre-compute all the you know all the possible answers that uh, that lead code is going to ask you by pre-computing the solutions and storing them as a um, as an attribute in your in your in your solution class. Uh, so one of the solutions did that, like the solution number approach number three did that. Um, uh, the solution created a class called tree that you know that calculated all 38 numbers uh, in one go before even trying uh, to uh, to call the triple Nachi function so uh, so that was pretty efficient if you if you already know how many how large the number can go up with uh, could go up to so we adopted this uh, this kind of thought uh, and uh, implemented that in our code as well. So instead of like expanding the dictionary on demand as we go, as we face different you know test cases, um, now we're gonna just basically fill the dictionary uh, all at once uh, at the beginning. Um, and by that replacement, we um, effectively re removed some if conditions in our main Tribonacci function that could be a speed enhancer uh, and uh, and yeah and that seems to have a better performance I mean 65 percent faster uh, 20 22 millisecond runtime uh, that gave us like a, a performance bump uh, memory usage wise yeah like all the memory usage are kind of consistent so it doesn't really hurt that much, uh, so I would say this um, this last enhancement uh, was worth it. That we um, we basically took the strategy of exploiting the problem uh, uh, pro the problem uh, constraints and then you know pre-compute everything at the beginning. Uh, this strategy was worthwhile and wor and, it, and it worked. So that is the summary for today's code. Uh, again, thank you all for uh, sticking with me for about an hour, uh, and I'll see you next time.